Okay. Um, I'm going to warn our affiliates. We may go long tonight. <laughs> we have a lot to cover. About what? About, yeah. What? <laughs> hey, uh, listen. When Van Jefferson gets signed, it is a big deal and requires a lot of analysis. So we're going to be here in a while. Van Jefferson's, yeah. Yeah. the life and times of Van Jefferson, um, what he means to human history. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yeah, this is does... not just a... Go ahead. What's that? No, go ahead. I'm sorry. What were you getting? What were you saying? Um, I, I was going to say, usually... This wasn't just one of the craziest weeks in Steelers history. It was one of the craziest weeks in Pittsburgh sports history. The, the, the Yager bobbleheads got stolen. Um, Duquesne is going to the to the tournament for the first time in 47 years. Yep. It didn't go even though they should have. Oh, yeah. Um, this has been crazy. I, I, yeah, but, but with the Steelers, I've never seen a week like this. Um, Let's just let's just start at the beginning. Let's just let's start at the beginning of the week. So we recorded last week Monday nights. Yep. Tuesday. First, we get I believe first we get the news that the Steelers signed linebacker Patrick Queen, who was with the Ravens, and we talked about this a little bit. And I know you mentioned it. You said like as a wish list, and I never considered it at all because. I figured, it's not what the Steelers do. They don't go out and get the, the big name free agents. They get the, the the bargain bin. And if they did get him, he would cost too much. Uh, he's going to get like $20 million a year or something like that. And they get him for a very affordable amount. Yeah. What do you think I, about Patrick Queen? I mean, that was my high list item because I, I just thought Wilkins, Wilkinson would have been a nice, but you know, he goes to the Raiders and okay. Queen was my next up. And I mean, wow, not only did we get him, we got him at a great price. So uh, that alone was, you, you made the comment about Von Jefferson before, Van Jefferson, whatever. Usually it's Van Jefferson is our big splash. You know? Right. <laughs> and I mean, like, you know, we, go to, we go to five below, we pick out our things and we go home where the other teams go to Dick's and they go to Macy's and, you know, and Nordstrom's. But no. Um, so boom. So that was huge. And really, I kind of thought, Either this is the end or this is the beginning of what's going to be some kind of very strange tale because we just got done saying, okay, like two weeks ago, we're like, okay, Kenny's a guy. Uh, Fields is not coming here. Uh, and now it's Kenny's to lose. He's back in the Matt Cannon situation. No more excuses. Then we, <laughs> then we get Russell Wilson coming in um, at an uh, incredibly even better rate than what we got Patrick Queen for. And at that point, you have Kenny Pickett and Wilson sitting on your arm, paying less than almost five million for two starting proven NFL quarterbacks. Then Deontay Johnson's traded. I want to say I called that one. Yes, uh, he's yeah. gone. Goes to Carolina. Ask me. And then the big one: Kenny Pickett's traded. Justin uh, Fields is here. And everybody lost their, you know what, because Pittsburgh town, he's a pit guy. Um, again, I've said this all along. If you would want to Moorhead state or, you know, you know, Albion or nobody would care because even in today's press conference, I found it interesting. I don't think it was a jab. He was, I think being honest, he grew up a Philly fan, grew up in Jersey. He's a Philly kid. That was his team. He was never a Pittsburgh guy. He went to Pitt for 14 years. You know, <laughs> and he graduated and everybody embraced him. So excuse me, that's Dr. Pickett. He got to his doctorate here. Yes, right. So, and if you want to wind it back a little bit further, Joe, I was thinking about this today. I was thinking about it. What can we talk about on this podcast? A lot of people already haven't talked about. One thing I kind of keep going back about the first podcast we did post the season's over was Mike Tom. And we all remarked how different that was. Tomlin starts bringing up all the guys he failed, starts talking about Marquise Pouncey. He's a championship player. I didn't get him there. And we didn't know, is he just placating it? Or is this something real? I'm starting to think it was something real. And I know he hasn't pulled the trigger on all of these trades. He does, as influencers say on some of it. And 
ever since that Mike Tomlin press conference, Joe, I think we've seen a new Pittsburgh. I mean, because this today was before. Um, Pitt not making it and getting screwed, that's happened before. This thing where we're bringing in two big free agent quarterbacks, a huge linebacker. Uh, I mean, Mike Williams is coming in tomorrow. I don't know about him. We can get to that later. His health issues, but holy crap, they're not yours and mine up until now. <laughs> wow. Let, let's go back to the Deontay trade because we did discuss this. And when we discussed it, we debated and we actually differed on this. Uh, I said, you have to keep him. He's that talented. He's your number one receiver. Y you know, you, for, for whoever the, the quarterback is, they, you know, you need a good receiver to, to compete. And you said, no, get him out. He has a bad attitude. And you were right. Either he wanted him gone or the Steelers wanted him gone or they both wanted each other gone. But he's but they sent him out to Carolina, which is a horrible quarterback situation, a horrible team. Um, and they really didn't. Now, what shocked me was what they got in return. And we were saying, what do you get for Deontay Johnson? Do you get a second or a third or four? And they basically just kind of traded him for a defensive back. Um, and you know, it wasn't even a salary dump. I mean, well, it ended up being a salary dump because they, they re redid his contract, but you know, right. they, they, and, and I think what they got from instead of a seventh round, they went to a sixth round or something like that. But it was basically just basically gave them away for almost nothing, but they, they just couldn't get wait, wait to get rid of him. And you know, as we've seen this week, it seems like there is a change in tone of this team of we're not putting up with your crap anymore. We're not putting up with your attitude. We're not putting up. If you're a problem, if you're a diva, get the hell out of here. I don't care if we give you away. I don't care if we put you in the, in, in, in the, 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 the clearance section of five below or something like that. Just, we don't, I'm, we're done with your crap. And that is a complete change from how they've dealt in the, in the, previous few years look what they've done with antonio brown they put up with his antics for years but the the, the talent of an Ando antonio brown and they put up with levy on bell and they put up with you know all these all these people that had you know crazy personalities but the difference is those people had talent it was like we're not going to put up with it with deontay johnson and any freaking picket yeah and i think a lot of that i mean that And that just may say enough. I mean, you can sit here and debate exactly what did Deontay do? What did he say? How bad did he ruffle his team? He's gone. And, and it was definitely to a level. If you go back a couple years, he had some very good statistics. Um, it's just been an uh, up and down ship with that guy. And the drop passes, they've been showing that all week too. Like he dropped a lot of passes from Ben, from Kenny from just about every quarterback that's thrown him a ball. He's had some horrific drops. So, yeah, he's gone. And um, I'm not sure – someone mentioned – a couple of people mentioned this week, well, it's because of his influence on Pickens. Well, Pickens was a bad in egg coming in. <laughs> right, he was right. a bad egg in yeah. Georgia, right? So uh, maybe they thought, well, he was making him a worse bad egg, whatever that terminology is. But he's gone. Uh, you know, I. but the thing was we agreed on that, but I also agreed that you and Al – and had a really good point in that it leaves a pretty glaring hole because we already we already shipped out um, uh, the guy's name we don't remember from the Bears that came here and Penn State, um, <laughs> Allen Robinson. And um, so they're a little bit needy now at wide receiver. So does that make wide receiver the target in a draft? We don't know. I don't think uh, Van Jefferson, I think he's probably a depth ad. Um, there are a couple guys, Mike Williams is coming this week. Mike Williams has missed a decent amount of time over the last couple of years, so I, I don't know. Um, um, I think Tyler Boyd could still be an option. Also, in a little bit of a conundrum wide receiver where we were not at earlier. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do, Joe, because they also need to help at center and help a tackle. Um, center, they're probably feeling pretty good because the first center off the board last year didn't go to the 44th pick. 
So maybe they feel they can, you know, grab a couple guys. But yeah, but um, this year is different. You know, and and that's one thing be, that, that, it, that surprises it, me that they don't they didn't get a center yet. Just as a free agent, dude. Now they're going to have to get one in the draft, and they're going to have to get one of the top ones. So that's that's going to be very interesting. Um, yeah. But Deontay Johnson, you had you had the drops, which people say, well, he didn't drop that much. He yeah, he dropped enough. Um, but it wasn't the, just the drops. Just in terms of football play, it was the catch the pass. And go five yards backwards, and, and usually ninety nine times out of hundred, get caught and go for a loss. And like it almost never worked the running backwards thing. It was so infuriating. But then it's the dang attitude. He got into a fight with Minka. He um, the play he took off like I think against Cincinnati maybe where uh yeah. the, the fumble was right at his feet and he just he just walked on by. Um, didn't block, and then and then at the end of the season, he basically declared he threw it hat in the ring and said, "I want Mason to be the quarterback." Now, <laughs> in, in in hindsight, he was speaking the quiet part out loud. I think he wasn't the only one that wanted Mason as a quarterback, but right. you, you know, and and and, and he, this is his last year of his deal. So he knew that he wasn't coming back anyway. So either he asked for a trade or the Steelers wanted him gone, whatever, bye. Even even if they didn't get much for him, just bye, go. Yeah, you know, and uh, that's the other thing. Not finishing the blocks and then having some other teammates call him out. Well, I would have finished the block for him. You know, and, and I mean, like you said, it, it really does take, believe it or not, folks, in this day and age where people do wear their emotions on their sleeve or their Twitter account or, or X or whatever, um, it still takes a lot of unmitigated gall to say which quarterback you're choosing for next year um, in a locker room in the front of the media like that. Like, if maybe you do believe in Mason, that's fine. It's usually kind of keep it in here, right? And right. for him to just, here you go. Just, you know, and I don't uh, – in Kenny Pickett's defense, it was a, a crappy thing to say. Um, and so, you know, but but Joe, you wonder how it adds to it a little bit. Like, these guys don't believe in him. I'm not so sure the Steelers really believe in him. Um, and that's almost a more interesting story to me to Deontay is, uh, I think all of us, a lot of us were probably more okay than what people realize with Kenny getting back, at least getting another shot. But, um, you know, in his defense, man, you, you bring in Russell Wilson, and uh, and that was kind of it. And then, like, I don't think he even got to see their bring in Justin Fields uh, at the same time. So, like, Kenny, you were going to be a third place QB, even though we told you you're going to have a shot at it. So, but the thing that's weird about that, Joe, is you're you're not going to Philadelphia and and replacing that guy either. You're probably getting less playing time because I think you hit this on the head too, talking about you were right about something. You said a couple podcasts back he's going to play next year. He is going to start a few games, guarantee he's going to get his own. And I felt he still had an opportunity to maybe even show, like, okay, to bring in a Russell Wilson, Super Bowl champion, uh, multiple Pro Bowls, uh, our man of the year. Um, I beat him. I show I earned it. And he didn't want that. You know, he he. I saw you put a couple things up about being a crybaby, and a lot of other guys did too. So, yeah, he just – uh, and you wonder if that that's that Deontay Johnson attitude, Kenny Pickett attitude. Maybe they maybe you're right, Joe. Maybe they looked at it as a whole and saying, don't like Deontay's attitude, don't like Kenny's attitude, these attitudes, see it. You know, there's a door. We'll find a way the, to get rid of you. The, the the Kenny Pickett thing is just amazing, unbelievable. Uh Friday night, I almost did a. I almost went on a rant. I almost did my own podcast Friday night. I was so damn tired that I didn't. But I almost, I was just so angry. So uh, apparently, this is this is what happened. When uh, apparently he was told he, not, when they brought in Russell Wilson or when they signed Russell Wilson, I apparently they told Kenny, um. Well, he's the veteran, so he'll get some first team snaps or whatever. But 
I don't know if they promised him the job or whatever the heck going on. And then, and then, you know, Kenny found out that, that Russell Wilson was going to be the starter or get the number one. I don't know what, but he was mad about that. Apparently he had a session. Uh, Kenny Pickett had a session with the, the wide receivers, which is what quarterbacks do in the off season. They all get together. They all throw, you know, throw the ball, get, you know, try to get on the same page, blah, blah, blah. And when he found out Russell Wilson got signed, he canceled that. So that was, that was one thing. Um, he, apparently he was just, he was just, yeah, he was just mad about the whole situation and he asked for a trade. Uh, um, the other thing that came up too, which boy, Joe, I don't remember the media, um, going at each other like this, but the whole thing about him refusing to dress in Seattle resurfaced too, um, as a problem, maybe a bigger problem than what he realized the team had with him, you know, cause you have kind of a, it seemed like the majority of Pittsburgh media believe that's the way it happened, but there's a few naysayers that say that didn't happen. It's baloney. I never even seen the media, Joe, go at it. Like they went at each other about this Kenny Pickett thing. I mean, it's really, when I say unprecedented, I don't remember anything like this. I mean, I guess I remember Cordell Stewart, right? There was, there was some, you know, yeah. controversies with him in the past, this, that, and the other thing, but nothing, nothing like this. Um, yeah. The, okay. So, so uh, whenever the Kenny trade happened, no, no, we before the Kenny trade, we had the uh, the the Russell Wilson press conference, which we which we'll get to. But before, right, right as the trade was announced, I'm trying to find out exactly when that was. Um, okay, it was okay. It was about. Mm, 2.30 in the afternoon, something like that. 2.30, 2.45, something like that. When it was right. announced that, that Kenny Pickett was being traded. Uh, about like five minutes later, Jerry Dulac of the Post-Gazette, who is very well connected with the Steelers, and very well connected, we, we believe, with yeah. Mr. Rooney, he tweets, the Steelers made the move because of the way Pickett was poorly handling the arrival of Russell Wilson, according to sources that came on the heels of Pickett's behavior last season when he refused to dress as the emergency third quarterback in Seattle in week 17. Yep. So the way I remember it, when that happened, there was, as the way I remember it, there was just one person who was saying that he refused. And that was Mark Madden. Right. And everybody said, <laughs> well, came from Mark Madden. Who, what a, you know, he's just a, he's just a, you know what stir he's just, he, he, you know, he's who knows if he's telling yeah. the truth or whatever. And then Kenny Pickett had that, that interview press conference, whatever, where he said, how dare you say that? I, of course I wanted to be out there. Anybody who says that, you know, they're just trying to, to, to further their career or whatever. I don't know why there's, how dare they say that? Turns out that was a flat lie. And Mark Madden and whoever said it back then was absolutely true. Because remember, remember in that game, Mason was a starter and uh, and Trubisky was the backup, but they had no third, you know, emergency quarterback. No. It's like, why do you go into a game without, and especially in an important game? This is like one, of, like one of the games of the of the season to determine what, whether because they were fighting to get into the playoffs. Why would you go there with only two quarterbacks when you have three available? That made no sense. So, no, no. yeah, go, go ahead. No, because you're right. Because in times of the past, remember. Forget what game Ben was hurt in. And um, so, you know, you had, and I think it, it was either Charlie Batch or, or it may have been um, the kid from Jacksonville. Um, and uh, what the hell is his name? And went to Marshall. Uh, his name's escaped me. Byron Leftwich. Yeah, they basically said, okay, Heinz Ward, you're the designated, you know, quarterback. And actually took, you know, because they knew it wasn't going to be. And, and so, like, they had all these plans. Like, they went into that game with really no plan at a third base quarterback in case something happened to Mitch, which just does not happen in the NFL. So I, I tend to agree with, with Jerry from the beginning. Um, and that's, and, you know, it, it's not that I can't blame Kenny, but he's frustrated. He just doesn't want to admit it. I, I, whatever it is, but I think that's what it was the whole way along. And, you know, and I think again, that added a little salt to the wound. And I think they came to a, 
a meeting, Joe, probably, I guess, early January. And they said, look, what's the biggest problem? You know, Mike, you just got done doing this conference. You wore your heart on your sleeve. You said a lot of things. What are some of these issues? And I think Deontay's name got thrown out there. Dropped me George Pickens a little bit. And I think with these things Kenny did out there, I'm, I'm worried about Kenny. I like Kenny, but what he did, how he did it, I'm worried about his stability going forward. Because to me, you don't make any of these moves um, without the – if you're totally confident Kenny Pickett is your starter. You just don't. At least somebody didn't have that confidence, whether it was Omar Khan or Mike Tomlin. Somebody didn't have confidence in Kenny Pickett that had a lot of pool, and now he's gone. He's in Philadelphia. Um, because Kenny made it very easy. I don't want to be here. I want to go somewhere else. Okay, that's all you had to say. Because I don't th- – if he would have said that, Joe, I, I don't know. Um, yeah. I don't know. But they, the Steelers obviously wanted to go in a totally different direction. It wasn't like they brought in Gardner Minshew or they, they brought in, you know, somebody like that. They, they brought in legitimate starters. One's a Super Bowl champion, which whatever way you want to look at it, however long ago it was. So, yeah. Um, so I think that seed was there for a while. You know, no, and if you're, if you're blind to that, if you don't want to see, I think it's at this point you just don't want to. So, you know. Now, let's go back to the press conference Russell Wilson did around one o'clock, something like that on Friday afternoon, which by the way, I, (laughs) whether he, whether he succeeds as a quarterback or not, I'm loving to dude. I am just, I'm really impressed with him. I want to, I want to run through a wall with, for that guy. He, you can tell that he is a (laughs) polished, you know, I I think, I think he's going to be a hall of famer just because, you know, he broke the mold before him, before him and Drew Brees, a small quarterback just didn't exist. And he's and for right. him, for him and Drew Brees to succeed is is amazing because there are limitations. There's, uh, high, size and height does matter in a quarterback. And he overcame that. So I, to me, he's, he's he's a Hall of Famer. But it's like he's you know, he's been doing this forever. He's polished. He, he was he was awesome in, the, in this press conference. But what blew me away was when he said. Yeah, I talked to Cam Hayward. He really Cam Hayward really tried to get me. Yeah, and I talked to Minka. And he re, he really he was we talked for a long time, and he he really wanted me. He recruited me here. I talked to T.J. Watt. T.J. Watt really tried to get me. Your own teammates, the leaders of the team, are actively trying to get someone else. I've never heard of this before. I that is the largest vote of no confidence I've ever seen in a person. They basically, you know, because those guys, they're not. None of them are young. You know, Cam Hayward. How many? How many years does he have left? TJ is in his prime. Mink is in his prime, but they're not exactly young. It's like we can't have another year wasted by horrible quarterback play. We're going to take this into our hands. We'll get a damn quarterback ourselves. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's also a real good point on all of that too. Like, and they think that had to be something that, you know, cause you can say all you want about Mike Tomlin. He's still very connected and, and knows what his team's doing, what's going, the ebbs and tides of the team, how to feel, feel the team. I think that was all very evident. You know, all these guys are, you know, out there recruiting him. And then what killed me after that was he, he signs. And then you had like Patrick, McQue- Patrick, we going, yeah, dog, I'm coming to Pittsburgh too. And he's like, yeah, baby. And like, there's like, like, it's some other guys coming to Pittsburgh. Like it was like, I mean, Kenny had to feel like the, I don't know. I mean, there is part of me. It's like, oh, that's just painful, you know? So yeah, I mean, that was the writing on the wall. And, um, and the only thing was when Kenny left, Deontay's gone. I'm sitting there looking like they have a hell of a lot of money to spend here. Um, it wouldn't surprise me at this point if, if they didn't talk to Fields because nobody else was. The Bears were hoping for all this stuff, weren't getting it. And now I think what they can say is, hey, we'll give up, we'll give them up. You can have them. Now we can fully concentrate on what quarterback we want to get in, in the draft this year. Um, that was the prevailing thing that say, okay. Obviously, what are we going to do now? We only have this guy. We got to get, at this point, we got to get Justin Fields. Yeah, yeah. And I'll admit, I'm the first one out there saying I'm not real happy about those 68 turnovers. It worries me to death. But I think one of the most often often spoken or written missed terms or, or way overused terms is, well, he just needs to change environment. I think that's, at this point, it's true at some points, and most of it's not. 
I think Justin Fields might be a guy that needs a change of environment. I mean, he could be a kid that could actually blossom being here. Uh, I don't think a lot of organizations could do that. I think this is one of them. I think I'll give them credit. I think Baltimore is one of them. I think there are a few places you can go where you've had a rough shot, had a lot of turnovers, didn't perform well, didn't perform up to your whatever your expectations. And a place like this can maybe bring you back and resurrect you. So um, I know there's no scientific proof to that. And you know, you can say I'm just being a yinzer, but I think places like Pittsburgh, Baltimore, um, Philadelphia, they seem to be able to take San Francisco. They're able to take kids, Kansas city, Kansas city won a super bowl last year with basically crap wide receivers, but they're able to take somebody, reinvent them a little bit. Boom. Look at Jerome Bettis, right? Had a great one year with the Rams was not working out. looks like Jerome Bettis is probably not going to pan out with his NFL career. And boom, comes to Pittsburgh. Not, not a bad career. Here, it's right? the organization. It's the environment yeah. that matters a lot. That yeah. matters, you know. One. You know, I don't want to be that that guy, but there there are other organizations that do that well, and, and we're one. We happen to be one of them. So, yeah, here we go. And it's probably Joe. To your point, last week it's probably frees them up, or well, it, it probably puts them drafting a quarterback somewhere in that fifth or sixth round. You know, I bet you they might take a shot at a quarterback, and hey, if it works out, it works out. But, um, so yeah, so now <laughs> everything. I don't know what the hell's gonna happen next week when we meet. For all I know, they'll trade TJ Watt to like you know. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? Draft. Yeah, any, anything is possible for so, LeBron James. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> LeBron uh, James is a wide receiver. Yeah. Uh, um, but but well, let's go back to the the Justin Fields thing. So uh, we talked about this many times on here, and we both agreed. I don't want him. He's that's exactly what you don't. There's no way the Steelers would want a guy that turns over the ball and when they're when they're a no turnover team. So yeah, it was it was surprising, um, and yeah, you just hope that a change of scenery does him good. Um, but when we we were we were also talking, what do we, what would you give up for a Justin Fields? You know, you want to give up a second? That's too much. Maybe I, I think I said like maybe a third or fourth. Maybe that I think that's what, what, what we agreed. And they got him for a ham sandwich. A six that might turn into a fourth next year. My God, Omar Khan, I'm calling the cops. You, you, that's grand theft larceny. The man is stealing from the NFL because he's he's robbing them blind with all these deals. That what they spent like five million on their quarterback room right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they have two legit. They have what I mean by this is because I know Fields has struggled. They have, but they do have two legit quarterbacks who can say we're been successful starting quarterbacks for longer than a few games, and are paying them five million combined. I mean, who the heck else can say that? You know, um, the other thing too, and all this stuff that happened uh, swept under the radar is they got a pretty nice safety into Sean Elliott. Um, this is the guy that made big headlines last year because he absolutely crushed, destroyed running backs left and right, including the new guy that just went from the Titans to the Ravens, NFL Hall of Famer. Um, why is that name escaping me? Holy cow. It's been a bad Monday. Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry. He put a tack on him like Donnie Shell and Earl Campbell Bays, right? Wow. So that's a guy that's going to help out with a run, a weak point for them over the last couple of years. So, I mean, that's a great ad. I think the punter from the Texans is a great ad, you know? So, I mean, they're, they are really, I can't remember how being this happy or more impressed by the Steelers in the off season than I am now. I mean, I told you last week and I, I guess I maybe I don't know if I'm wrong now, but you have to go back to probably Kevin green as a big splash free agency acquisition. The drone Bettis was pretty big too, but Kevin Green had just come off like a 15 sack, 16 sack season, you know? Uh, and we know what that happened with him and Lloyd. And, and that was just such a great combo for a few years. Um, this is, they have never made splashes like this ever, Joe. And it just kind of keeps on coming. They've been smart signings, things we need. We needed a new punter. We needed a safety to stop the run. You went out and got one of the better ones at that. So uh, the guy they got back from Deontay Johnson, depth ad, very, very fast, very fast, but um, can't, we'll isn't see. very good against the run, gets burned a lot because of his speed, because he overcommits. So 
Wow. But he, but um, he was on a very bad team, so maybe being on a better team will make him better. Team. I don't know. I don't he know. He was on a bad team. And Patrick Queen, Joe, I mean. Oof. That was defense. huge. Oof. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it really is. And now, I mean, I think they are now back to that. They should be playoff bound. They should be a contender in the EFC North. Do I think they're going to the Super Bowl yet? No. But – they're a hell of a lot closer than they were in December. Here's the other weird thing. I don't know weird, or maybe that's just how it is, but it, it has been made very clear that Russell Wilson is a starter and Justin Fields is a backup. Like, there is no doubt. <laughs> it has been made very clear. Justin Fields has been starting for, what, three years now. And it's like, yeah, you're the backup now. And, and and apparently he wanted that. Apparently he wanted to come to the Steelers. Okay. I just thought that was. I I agree with you. 100% agree with you. Uh, the only thing I'd say on the flip side is I, you got to wonder, will there be a quarterback battle in, in camp? When it, like it, Now is one thing. It's still March. Um, when we get to August and July, what's going to happen then? You know, what if. What if it's noticeable the chemistry he has with the new receivers they bring in and and, and Pickens and uh, Muth and and everything? So I mean, who knows? Um, but maybe you're right. And uh, he thought he did talk about you know taking a little bit of a back seat for a minute and and you know maybe re you know rejuvenating himself and doing some of those things in that interview. So yeah, I mean, it's it's. It's it, that's why I say it's unprecedented. I don't almost know what to say. I know we said a lot here in the last first half hour, but in a way, I don't know what to say because it's like they've never done anything like this before. Um, here's what here's what I want to see. I want to see them both play at the same I, time. Oh, yeah. yeah, I and I think you will. I think it goes back to if it was Kenny Pickett and um, Russell Wilson. I think you were going to see them both. So now you're going to see them both again. Uh, well, not Kenny, but yeah, I mean. Who knows? There's some decent free agents left out there. There's some wheeling and dealing left. Who knows what the heck they're going to do? Who knows? Who knows but what's going to happen? Latrobe just got a lot more exciting. Oh, my God. Oh my God. I might be there every day, man. I, I can't wait to see this. Me either. Heck, I'm Me going either. just to see if, if Sierra's going to show up. Maybe maybe she'll, maybe she'll share a popcorn with me or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the um, And the interesting thing, Joe, I don't know if you picked up on this one. The Steelers. I don't know what the reason is. They traditionally do not or refuse to give out the number one to players. Um, now Justin Fields is there and he can say, you know. Well, <laughs> the, the know. numbers are just outrageous. I mean, Patrick, Patrick Queen is going to be number six. I know. Hey, Bobby Brister. I was going to say, is that Bobby Brister's number? Here come the Brister jerseys. I'm telling you, they did it with the Bobby <laughs> Maddox jerseys. They're getting the somebody Bobby has, jerseys out. Somebody Duck has a Queen. Bobby Brister out there. They're just going to put they're gonna put duct tape over Queen. it with the word Queen. <laughs> yep. yep. I hope whenever he makes a tackle, they play like another one bites of dust or something, or some Queen song or something like that. <laughs> Ooh. I or like maybe, that. Maybe God Save the Queen or something. I don't know. Yeah. All of us in Bohemian Rhapsody in the third quarter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, this is just amazing. And, then, and I, have you have you followed him on X on Twitter? Not yet, no. Oh, no. you got to go. I, I mean, he got into a massive brawl with Baltimore Ravens fans. They are losing their ever-loving minds over this. And they're taking it out on him. And, like, he was like, STFU, you mother, and blah, blah, blah. I mean, he went – I mean, he gave it to Ravens fans like you wouldn't believe. Oh, it's it's phenomenal. I, all I saw was the end. I was, he's like, I'm done messing with you people anymore. So yeah. whatever. Um, I did like, and I'm, man, I I really like Lamar Jackson. I know, I I know that's that's a horrible thing to say. I I just think he's a really good dude. He he repeated the um, the the Saquon Barkley thing. He's like, you're dead to me, man. Or <laughs> something like that. You're dead to me now, yeah. or something. Um. But yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Actually, I follow Russell Wilson now. Um, I oh god, there, Darren's gone. Um, okay, this would be a good time. I think he's coming back. I'm back. Okay. Uh, um, I I, I want to get back to, to Kenny and the whole reason I wanted to. I was so angry and I wanted to. 
uh, go on a rant uh, when it happened. Uh, who in the bloody hell does that dude think he is demanding a trade because they got someone else? You've brought up this stat yeah. before. He is basically statistically the worst quarterback in NFL history or something like that. What was it? Touchdowns per attempt or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Worst, worst in, history. in history. Maybe I think like one other person is, is just as bad as him. Who in the bloody hell do you think you are? To demand anything when you sucked so bad. My daughter, who knows nothing about football, who does nothing about sports, she put her best. It's like, but he's not good at his job. What did he expect? He just wasn't good. And listen, we follow this very closely. We've been doing this podcast for a while now, and I know you're a lifelong diehard fan. So am I. And we follow it very closely because we do this podcast every week. Watching games with Kenny Pickett as the quarterback was painful, frustrating, infuriating. I was so angry, even when they won, because it was just so ridiculous. It required for and, and, and people that cite Kenny Pickett's uh, uh, record. Well, look at his record as a starter. Most of those wins were because he didn't do a damn thing except maybe like one drive in the in the fourth quarter or something like that, and the defense carried the team. And we, we relied on – remember that uh, first Cleveland game where it's like we needed like four turnovers and Deshaun Watson being an idiot for them to win. That's how they won games. That's not sustainable. And that's what we had to put up with. And the minute that Mason Rudolph showed up, and actually, all he did was perform as a functional offense. It was like a breath of fresh air. And the entire team saw that. But where does this dude get off saying, I'm mad because you brought in someone else and I might not be the starter? Like, what the hell? Where do you get off, you entitled brat? Yeah, yeah. You know, and it seemed like every week, he started you were sitting there like i had to say i would as if it was a second stringer i didn't have that first string confidence in him that you know the few a lot of fans most fans didn't um but that's the thing like you know the reason the steelers weren't picked to do well last year is nobody really believed in kenny pickett like i'm talking about the media types you know national media they weren't giving a it was in a respect because they didn't respect Kenny Pickett. And you can say all you want about that Kenny Pickett haters because Pickett haters, if you don't like Kenny, you are dead to them. You don't know anything. You're stupid. You're a moron. Um, you know, I mean, just horrible crap. It's like Nazi Germany or something. Um, just awful, awful tweets I've seen from, from these fans about, if they, you know, they're big on Kenny. But they just can't get out of their own way and realize that, like, nobody's really liking the guy or has confidence in the guy. Uh, he didn't. You know, he exude confidence and they all the excuses. It's Matt Canada. It's the offensive line, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, and obviously it, and you talk about like what TJ Watts said and, 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 and Hayward, his own teammates didn't see it, Joe. Um, I didn't feel it any Sunday that he played. They didn't, they didn't feel it. Uh, it wasn't like he, and, and to all your point, it wasn't like he won NFL rookie of the year. It wasn't like he had a stat saying, Hey, he had touchdowns per throw of any rookie in NFL history. He didn't have a great relationship or good stats with one receiver or another to make him stand out. He had nothing to go back on and says, hey, look what I can do. Look what I've done. He has none of that. None of that. And I don't care who you place blame on, 25 games, he had none of that. So you're right. You don't have a lot to stand on. Now, you can come in and say, you know what? I'm going to fight like hell. Am I going to say a word? Fine. Bring Russell Wilson in. Bring you one in. I'm coming out number one at La Trobe. It's going to be me. I'm going to guarantee it. I'm going to prove it to you. That would have stuck with me. Instead, he's going to bitch about it. Now he's taking his ball and gone back to Philadelphia. Go. Unbelievable. Just have unbelievable. Fun. And Go. and then in his press conference today, he's like, yeah, I handled that right. Like, what the hell are you talking about, uh, man? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and one thing about the 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 discourse online. Uh, it is 
nasty. The de- his defenders are nasty. And I'm talking about, I have friends that have said, that have like put out tweets about Kenny Pickett, and they got death threats. What the hell is going on that you're you're issuing you're 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 threatening anything against somebody? I hey I know I I anytime I post anything about about him, people call me names and and stuff like that. Like, are you kidding me? You're defending him, bro. Look back here. I bleed bit black, uh, blue and yellow. I have been a diehard fan all my life. When they when they drafted Kenny, I thought it was a wonderful thing. I was like, yeah, that's great. Hometown, you know, we got our we got our guy and stuff. Now I hate his guts, and I hate his guts because I saw him play, and I saw him get worse, not better. But this crap about people yeah. just, 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 you know, getting into, into fights and threats and stuff because you, you, you tweet something that you don't like the guy? What the hell's wrong with you people? I saw one idiot tearing at Ed Bouchette because, you know, Bouchette made a comment about enjoy Philadelphia or whatever. You know, kind of snarky, but not too disrespectful. And they tore to him like, you're a failure. And Clyde's like, okay, let me tell you something. Here's a guy who – Ed Bouchette's a Hall of Famer, okay? Hall of Famer. And he, you know, someone blasted him, a, a guy I know, and he's not that bad of a guy. I guess he's just mad because he's a Kenny Pickett loyalist. Blasted him about, oh, you couldn't get, uh, you couldn't get LC into the Hall of Fame. That's not Ed Bouchette's fault. That's not his problem. (laughs) That's not his fault. He's tried. He gives a great speech. He does everything he can, you know. But they're like you. We've said this on multiple times in this show. There is stealeritis because guys like Elsie Greenwood should have been in a long ago. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Damani Dawson longer than it should have been. Heinz Ward should be in there. Uh, You know. I mean, that's just all of that. Um, And so, yeah, you know, and that's what I mean, Joe. I mean, you're taking shots at. Ed Bouchette. I mean, you and I do our thing here. We we we're we do our. He's thing. a we're legend. Not, he is a, a legend. One of the greatest ever writers to ever do this. We're two yinzers that fight over how you should put cheese on a pizza. He's going to be a hall of famer. That's the dividing line, right? <laughs> exactly. uh, but um, no, uh, it's just yeah. So I mean, in a way, I'm almost glad Kenny's gone because maybe they'll go with him, you know, and just. Whatever, move on to something else, guys. Um, and it does bring up. I, I saw this, which this was inter, inter, interesting to me. Uh, a couple of discussions on as a, as a Penn Stater, as a Pitt fan. Do you want to see a Penn Stater, a Pitt fan go to the Steelers? And, and you almost want to say no, you know, because if they do bad, it's like, uh, you know, I loved him so much in college, and I hate to see him struggle in the pros. Um, but you know, Franco Harris did pretty well. Uh, Tony Dorsett did pretty well. Unfortunately, it wasn't for the Steelers. So you know, it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, so yeah, so that's the bad part about it. If they fail miserably and they're high pick and it's Penn State or Pitt, it stinks. I get that. It's kind of a pride thing. Yeah, I get it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I uh, some of the tweets were were very funny. Somebody tweeted very happy for Kenny. Very glad he will be away from this toxic toxicity. It will be good for him in the long run. Yes, so glad he left the toxicity of Pittsburgh to go to that wonderful utopia of Philadelphia because they're all about peace and love of that place. Nothing bad has ever happened in Philadelphia. No, man, that's that's just a church going good folk there. <laughs> Batteries be- and snowballs. There's a prison in there. If, uh, if Kenny yeah. Pickett actually does play any games for the Eagles, they'll be throwing so many batteries at him. He could open up his own radio shack with how many batteries that guy is going to get. Yeah. Yeah. It's like these guys that wish for that. Like, I mean, if there's, there's Philly or Philadelphia and then like New York, along with New York media in particular, like you better be good because you're going to get lambasted in New York or Philly. Those are the two cities where High they pressure. are absolutely unrelenting. I mean, just Boston's up there too, but man, you listen to like sports radio in New York. If you're ever driving up there, and it's like, oh my God, like this is like R rated. You know, we got the fan and we got, you know, Madden and uh, DVE in the morning there, and they're all pretty good guys and they take some shots, but it's pretty jovial or somewhat harsh, but respectful. Not there, man. And it would be the same way in Philadelphia for Kenny Pickett, Joe. I mean, oh man, it doesn't oh, matter man. if you're wearing your Kenny Pickett or uh, I forget whose jersey he has on. He, did you see he released that uh, jersey he had on? Uh, as a kid growing up in Philadelphia, an Eagles jersey on. Oh, um, oh nice. so, yeah. Uh, like, well, dude, it doesn't matter. I mean, if you suck, <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll burn that picture in effigy. 
You yeah. you didn't want to compete against Russell Wilson, who is what right. 36? Yeah, so, coming off a better year than people give him credit for. Um, but yeah, it's not like he's 26. Yeah. You know, yeah. he had two years ago he had a bad year at Denver, but that was that was the worst head coaching hire maybe in professional football history. Um that that wasn't good, and, and I don't think I think when you go away from a team that you had you were so endeared in Seattle and so entrenched there, the first year you go somewhere else, other than unless you're Tom Brady, um, it's always a bit of a struggle, you know. Whether it, you know think that was, some of that was Russell Wilson's fault, some of it was Denver's fault, but last year, you know, he was eighth in passing efficiency. He he was a top ten quarterback last year. Whether you want to see that or not, you know. So the Steelers are getting a guy that's actually coming off a high note. Uh, and you hope that he has one or two of those years left in him, Joe, because I don't think there's much more than that. He has one or two years left in him of 20-plus touchdowns and, you know, single-digit interceptions. Good signing. Well, that's Good the signing. question now. Now you got to think about the future because we thought that Kenny Pickett was the long-term, you know, the heir apparent. Even when they got Mitch Trubisky before the draft, they thought you know, nobody thought this was going to be the guy. They thought it was just going to be a bridge guy. And then they get Kenny. It's like, oh wow, we we got our we got our long term solution. And the dude l- left. The dude was gone like quicker than almost any first round pick ever. I think I saw Jermaine Stevens was the Jermaine only one that, that the last one that yeah. lasted this didn't last that long. Three so, seasons. So now what do we do? You know, I've heard talk of well, they're already talking about extending uh, Russell Wilson. It's like. The guy has one foot in the grave. No offense, but, you know, he's he's towards the end of his career. I know he says he wants to play another five, seven years. Every quarterback says that. Oh, I want to play until right. I'm 40. Well, well yeah, that, that, that doesn't you, – you, what you want and what father time tells you is going to happen is, is uh, two different things. And then you say, okay, well, what about Justin Fields? We have this young guy. What about him? Uh, he has a, they have until they, they haven't, uh, by May 2nd, they have to decide whether to exercise the fifth year option on them. The fifth year option on quarterbacks is like 25 million. I highly doubt they're going to just automatically pay 25 million to a dude that really hasn't deserved it yet. So that's not happening. I could see working on a deal with one of them, but I, you know, is either of these guys going to be uh, uh, in the mix for quarterback in, two, in 2025? Oh, uh, see, see, every time Darren leaves, I think, you know, did I, did I, did I say something or is he, or did he have to go to the bathroom? Now, I don't know what there it's been are. the last two weeks. I apologize. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the internet expert. Which is, is you on this show? It's my wife. Yeah, right? Really, I'm the IT guy. So yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm what's going come on? to your house? <laughs> low bandwidth. Um, but um, but yeah, 2025. What do you think? Do you think either of these guys are actually in the mix for for you know the long term quarterback solution? I think Russell Wilson might be the better of the two, only for the fact that I really do feel like whatever happened in Denver, he has a legitimate guilt a little bit about that. Uh, now, now, last year, again, a good year, uh, you know, a, a very nice year for a quarterback. I think he'd like to go out on top. And I think a Pittsburgh or a Pittsburgh team, whether, whether anyone else listening outside of Pittsburgh, sorry, but it's true. We have a huge fan base. Maybe Dallas is the only thing comparable or bigger in, in merch purchases and TV viewership around the country. There's other great fan bases, so don't get all pissy with me. Cleveland, Philly, we love you too, whatever. But – this would be a place where if he's able to take the Steelers to any legitimate amount of success, he would love to go out on top doing that, doing that here. You know, he saw Tom Brady do that with Tampa, takes him to the Super Bowl, right? Um, I think he'd like to do that. I think he has legitimate reason to be here and want to succeed here. He doesn't want to end on a sour note because you're right. I, is he off a Hall of Famer yet? Probably. He's a Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year. He's a Super Bowl winner, two-time Super Bowl one time winner, uh, probably a two time winner if that stupid that stupid play they call oh. it. Um, probably a two time Super Bowl winner at that point. Um, so yeah, he's probably a future Hall of Famer. If he could somehow take the Steelers somewhat far, maybe to another Super Bowl and they lose, whatever, we hope not. I think that's so. I think he has a, an investment, Joe, in, in, in Pittsburgh right now because he knows that they will be invested in him. They both have a lot to prove. Russell Wilson 
has to do some major reputation rehabilitation. You know, he yep. was he was the man in 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 Seattle. And I don't know whether you heard this rumor or not, or I don't know how people believe it, but that he's kind of hated in Seattle because there was a report or there was a rumor that he tried to get Pete Carroll fired. It was basically, right. he basically did a power play and said, it's either him or me. So they're like, okay, so get the heck out of here. We'll, we'll stick with the coach. So he goes to Denver and you think, oh, I remember when they, when they, when they sent him to Denver, cause Denver was like a, a good team that needed a quarterback. It's like, oh, they're one piece away from quarterback. They're going to be a Super Bowl contender. And it was nothing but a complete disaster that first year with, like you said, that, that coach that doesn't belong working at Taco Bell, let alone, yeah, let alone, let alone the NFL. Then, you know, and then, yeah. And then he's with Sean Payton and you think, oh, okay, well, that's a better coach. And and, and that that just didn't work. So, and now, you you know, the, the, the last indignity is they, the, the Broncos decided we would rather get an $80 million cap hit and and destroy our team than have you on this team for one more minute to get out of here. So thank you for that $34.7 million, Denver. Exactly. Exactly. My goodness. You know, and then Justin Fields has a lot. He has to prove that he's an actually good quarterback. His, his winning record is horrible. Yep. You know, and yes, he has done some good thing that I, I did not see his running ability because I think he's basically one of the best running quarterbacks ever. The way yeah. that dude can take off Lamar Jackson's amazing, but Lamar Jackson is more like a little bit slower. It's like, I'll run you over or, or, or whatever. Justin Fields is like, I'm basically he's like faster than almost any running back. It just, he just, he just takes off and he's amazing. And he so, doesn't do the spin a Rooney into an argument. No, no, he does not. He does not. He does not. He, does, he flies by the, by those uh, defensive guys. So, so Justin Fields has a lot to prove too, whether he could be a viable quarterback in this league. So who knows what's going to happen? It's just crazy. And then who knows what's going to happen? Who's num- the number three? I think that they will draft someone and that could be the yeah. future. Who knows? If they didn't bring in Fields, I think you posted this like a week ago, and I loved it. I thought, okay, you bring in Tannehill. Now, yeah, okay, our quarterback stable is now becoming the, the Stadler and Wardrobe for the Muppets, but still, you know, they're there. But, um, no, now that you brought in Fields, I think you're right, Joe. Now you go get a quarterback in a draft. Again, it's probably going to be mid-round level. But um, there's no more – I don't, unless – I mean, you can see, I guess, Kirk Cousins in Atlanta – there's not much more of an intriguing quarterback conundrum than you do in Pittsburgh. I mean, yet unless Aaron Rodgers agrees to run for vice presidency. Now that would be for guys like us. That's fantastic. Cause I would love if he was vice president, because then you have to stick like a secret service guy in the backfield who have to actually shoot oncoming linebackers to protect him. Now that's story. That's the news. You there know, you go. But, uh, there you other go. Than the Jets and Aaron Rodgers, um, all eyes are going to be on Pittsburgh. And I think, Russell Wilson and Fields realize that they're not stupid guys. Like all eyes are on Pittsburgh. Now we, we had this stable of quarterbacks and they're all gone. Like, again, we're talking about unprecedented folks. I mean, okay. Yeah. This guy goes here. Joe Montana goes from the 49ers. The chiefs. Well, we have Steve young. No, no, no. We, we just said total, you know, it was like a Madden game. Here you wipe go. It out. And, yeah. Wipe ooh. it out. Yeah. You know, they remember how, uh, what they always call it. Andre had the, uh, what the gorilla monsoon call that. Uh, like the brush uh, hit, like the whatever you used to call it. Andre would grab you and just, you know, oh, and, oh, and uh, that's what we just did. We did the Andre, the giant, you know, back and forth. Um, and so, yeah, it's just fantastic. It's, it's going to be, hopefully, for the better, so much fun if they succeed. If it goes south, it'll be another story. But, um, yeah, I, I just, I think that, Russell Wilson, I like to believe that he's invested in, in the city and, and what's to do what he wants to do here. Um, and you got to give the guy a chance. And you know, we gave Kenny Pickett a chance, didn't work out. So, you know. How amazing is it that you have a Walter Payton man of the year on defense and offense? I've, I don't think I've ever heard of a team that has two of those dudes. That's amazing. It really is. And I think that was the thing. Like I have my aunt, she lives in Seattle. She has all her life. And uh, she, she messaged me and she said, you have no idea what a kind man uh, you're getting. Cause she's been a, she's like 77 and she's been a nurse for like all of her life. And then she's a volunteer at the hospital. And she said, you don't know how many times this guy, I have seen him personally 
stay after the cameras leave and stay with the kids' wing. He'll go down to the senior wing with the amnesia patients like this. He is a legitimate good guy. It hurt me to – just what she said. It hurt me to go see him go to Denver and go through all that and whatever he did, personal struggles, whatever. I just didn't – that's not the Russell Wilson I know, uh, and I know who he is and what he can be. So uh, I think it's going to be a good fit. I think he'll embrace the town. I think the town will hopefully embrace him. But you're right. Uh, the other aspect of this whole thing is you have this guy over here that's now back up. And he has this tremendous upswing in talent, and he's very, very young. What is he, 24, 25? Yeah, yeah. So, like I mean, whew, you know, um, man, I, it's. Yeah, you know, who, by the way, was like the number 10 or 11 pick in the draft when he was right. drafted. So you got a guy with a high pedigree that could just, if he could just figure out, you know, the the the, the turnovers. You might have, you might have something there. You might have your long-term guy for the next I, ten years. Maybe. I'll, I'll not. I'm not going to hide from what I said. What I said, and I still stick by. Sixty-eight scares the hell out of me. But yeah. you know, the Bears don't exactly have a great coaching carousel there. They don't aren't known for development. They're probably one of the worst teams in the NFL over the last, you know, fifteen years. Um, you know, even when I went to that Super Bowl against the Colts, nobody knew they were nobody knew thought they were gonna win that Super Bowl. Um, give me a break. So uh, look at they did with Mitch Trubisky, they couldn't develop him either. You know, first round choice, they they misjudged him and he shuffles him off to Buffalo. He comes here, now he's back in Buffalo. Um, so they couldn't develop fields, they don't know how to develop players in Chicago. Um, you know, they never got him a decent offensive line, anyone that could block for him, a receiver that could catch him. We know because we sent one there um for a legit stupid you know great return for us bad return for them um yeah so again of all the guys of the two guys i think he may have the biggest upside joe he may really come here and flourish in pittsburgh very possible um i i I just wonder what what prompted all this craziness all this because this is so unstealer like yeah. for them to be making all these bold moves i it's either rooney basically said guys enough is enough uh or it's omar khan really feeling himself and really coming into his own he's like yeah this is my team now i don't know i don't know i, th- I think yeah. i think tomlin has a little bit to do with it too um I think with everything that happened last year, I think Tomlin kind of saw his mortality because, you know, we there is in, in, with Steeler fans, there is always a contingent that says, fire Tomlin. Tomlin's the problem. We're never going to win with him. You know, we haven't won any playoff games. All he does is, you know, worry about being over 500. We're never going to win with him. But last year, those calls were very loud. And I think, was, and I, I, I think, he, I think, he, I think he got the message like, Oh crap. I better get this quarterback thing. Right. Or I better get this. I better get this thing right because I think people are starting to lose patience. And when when the owner, when Mr. Rooney, the first thing he says is, "I am tired of this situation. I'm tired of losing, uh, f- not even winning a, a, a playoff game." I think I think he's getting the message like, "Oh crap! Uh, I think my time here is short if wow. I don't if I don't get this together." I think it's two guys who got the message that you just said there. So it's it's Tomlin. I go back to what I said uh, at the top of the hour here was that. You know, I think we saw a very raw and real Mike Tomlin in that final preseason press conference. Interested to see because we won't see him again till most likely till the coaches' meetings at the end of the month. Um, you saw a very raw and emotional Mike Tomlin. We have never really seen that before ever, so that's why we know it's probably genuine and and rare. We know for sure. Um, but there was a lot of people in the last year or two, including myself. And you're right; I'm one of the guys who've been uh, on Tomlin. Um, where a lot of people are making remarks about since Dan Rooney passed, this team isn't what it used to be that, you know, art, the what art, the third, right. Or second um, isn't as connected or isn't as involved as Dan was. And that was something that, that, that kind of started little and got legs this past year from a lot of people, you know, he saw that. And maybe you're right, Joe, maybe he saw, he's like, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. They're saying I'm part of the problem. Maybe I am. And maybe, 
you know, that's what I'm wondering after that press conference. I have, I love to have been a fly in whoever's wallet was in the office there at Akersher. It said, you know what? We need to make some changes because this isn't working at all. Let's go and tell me about what's not working. And I think to your point, uh, again, uh, this is where we talked about Deontay's attitude, Kenny's attitude, the who does the players on the team currently believe in? Then we need to make some changes. And because they didn't just get up one day, Joe, and say, let's go get Russell Wilson. Let's go get Justin Fields. Let's go get Patrick Queen. Let, this is all we're, we're going to do. This is definitely what we're going to do. No, this has been thought of since probably Super Bowl halftime or before that. Right. And, um, and, and, but I don't think the Kenny, I don't think the Kenny thing was planned at all. I think I think they just wanted to bring in Russell Wilson. Right. It's like, hey, we need we need to we need a different we, we need a lot of talents here. We can't just be we just can't put all our eggs in 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 Kennedy's basket. We we need to have some other options out there. But I don't think they expected Kenny to be that petulant and that much of a baby about the situation. And it's like, really. Who this is? This is how you are. Okay, fine. You want to go? Go. We'll we'll get rid of you. Or conversely, Joe, they may have said, "Let's bring him in and see how this kid reacts." They could have said that too. And boy, did that come out! You know, they, then you know, Kenny put his call call cards on the table. Like, and you're right to your point. Who are you to say all that? Okay, yeah, you're gone. You know, so very short yeah. leash right now, in Pittsburgh. There's very something that that. Dealer. Bill Cower always said adversity doesn't build character. It reveals it. And the minute that Kenny Pickett had a little bit of adversity, a little bit where Mason Rudolph was, was playing ahead of him. He started acting out and started being a baby. And now with this Russell Wilson thing, he really started acting out. It's like, Oh, is that how you really are? Because one thing that was touted about Kenny Pickett was his, um, his his character. He's a leader. My goodness! And remember another thing. This is what I know. We talked about this at the end of the season when you interviewed all the players. Who wasn't there? Kenny Pickett. Yours. Yep. He's a captain. Yeah, he's a captain. And you know, oh, another thing that came out. And apparently, in the press, they called him Coin Flip Kenny. And the reason they called him that was because. He, the only time he would show up, like like when he was hurt and stuff, he would still go out there for the coin toss for at the beginning of the game because he's you know the captain and he's supposed to be number one. And remember that whole controversy about the depth chart? Oh, yeah. the depth chart, the depth. Chart, and you know, apparently that was because to to to, to soothe Kenny's ego. My goodness, what a petulant baby! Yeah, no matter which way you look at it, whether you love Kenny Pickett and you're hating all this right now or whether you didn't and you're loving all this right now or you were a Mike Tomlin hater and now you're maybe whatever, they're making changes at an unprecedented rate to try to make this work in a new way. And that's the one thing that you all have to agree on, whether you like it or not. Because like you said, our dads are sitting there, you know, I know if your, your dad were sitting next to my dad, I'd be like, huh, he did what? With who? Right, right. Huh? It's like the you know, Steelers? That? Yeah. No, I mean, it's, yeah, I, we're doing the same thing, you know? So, um, yeah, it, it's really, it's really going to be, I feel like it's going to put the Steelers into a point where they're going to be a very successful franchise again very soon and start winning playoff games and making a run at the Super Bowl or it'll all fall to pieces and, and then you're in a total rebuild, you know? Um, yeah. So, yeah. But at least they tried, you know, yeah. at least I would rather have, I would rather have Russell Wilson and or Justin Fields. If they crap the bed, if they, they fall on their face, I'd rather have that than freaking what I saw from Kenny Pickett for most of last year, which just, I, I just it was it was hard to watch games. It was just hard to to, yeah. to sit through that. It just like like even when they won, I was angry and frustrated. Like I don't want to do that. I don't well, want. I don't. Yeah, and I think you and I were at different games. I don't know if we were the same game, but I mean, when the booze came, I never heard booze in my life like that at a Steeler game. Yeah, I mean, maybe I guess I I wasn't old enough to witness it, but, you know, with the whole Bradshaw and, and, you know, Jefferson Street Joe and 
uh, Terry Hanratty thing. Maybe back then, I guess there was people said, um, but, uh, but boy, man, I mean, Steeler fans were vocal, you know? And I think when Tomlin, that first time it happened, Tomlin was like, we know, we appreciate our fans are passionate. Uh, no, we're not passionate. We're pissed off. Uh, and so the booze only got louder after he did that at the corresponding games. And I think that was in response to him kind of saying, oh, yeah, you're passionate. No, 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 no. There's a difference between passion and being pissed off. And the fan base is pissed off. And a lot of people are hanged off. And that was, I think, the result of that press conference. We saw where he got a little emotional. You know, all this, this stuff, you win, you win, you win. Uh, you know, they he hit that milestone during the regular season. And, you know, the national media were like, yeah, right. But the local media and the local fans were like, it's not that great. It, it yeah. really isn't that great. You know, and he, he, I don't care what Mike Clown does, or what kind of cloak he likes to wear. He's heard it. He knows it. Oh, he, he hears hear it. it all. Yeah. He said, he yeah. says he doesn't. That's a total lie. He hears it all, right. which was very funny. Speaking of lies, because what did we hear? Uh, from Omar Khan and and Mike Tomlin, you know, the, the last time we heard from them, we have full faith in Kenny Pickett. Um, Tomlin was asked, he said, "Is the starting quarterback of this team on the roster right now?" And he said yes, but he didn't say yes right away. He paused a few seconds and then he said it, and, it, and people are like, "Hmm." Mm. Now. Of course you're going to say nice things about Kenny Pickett because at the time he was literally the only quarterback on under contract. <laughs> right. But what are you going to say? What are you going to do, pull a Deontay Johnson and say, oh, no, actually, we want someone else. Like, you, you have to say nice things about the dude. He's literally the only one you got. Right. You, know, you love the one you're with. But, wow. Yeah. I I just I just never saw this coming. Tr trading. Trading your, your first-round quarterback. Wow. You know, and that's the other thing, too. There's there's that uh, certain faction in the media that said, I, and I was one of them, um, the Steelers are too proud to admit they made a mistake. They'll never admit they made a mistake. They did. So in that vein, I was wrong, and so were a lot of other people who said they would never do that. Well, they, they did. Um, so that's why it's just like, I mean, yeah, man. I mean, crazy. Just unprecedented stuff all over the place. Quarterback situation coaching situation uh i mean man uh it's yeah and it's it's like it's like they did a rebuild without doing a rebuild i don't know how to really put my finger on it it's like i, I don't know they didn't just do a typical pittsburgh we, where we just kind of fill the pothole and then it cracks up a little bit again and we got to fill it back again like they went and repaved the whole street yeah. you know and it's yeah 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 and then and that was week one over a free agency. Right. Yeah. Who knows what's going to happen this week? Five minutes from from uh, from when, when we get off, it'll probably be some whole some some other crazy thing going on. Yeah, they'll have T. Higgins and like uh, you Justin know, Jefferson with missing teeth. Um, yeah, right. I don't know. <laughs> they've so, they've they've cloned Jack Lambert. That's that's right, the next thing. Right. There's like Jurassic Park. They uh, found a mosquito. <laughs> it was tucked in his uh, neck pad. And yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. This is just this is just insanity. Uh, and we'll see, we'll see what happens. Just stay tuned. We always said, we said, no, oh, there's no, there's really no off season. There's always interesting things going on in the off season. Yeah, they're not playing games, but stuff goes on. But my God, I didn't think I'd be like this. I'm telling you, we, we need. I've said this for a few years now. Now we really got to do it. We we literally got to. Just go get a hotel room and do a live uh, donut bag. I would uh, love to do just trobe. a live broadcast of, yeah, the, live of the draft. Live broadcast from the trobe. I don't care if we sit up on the hill. <laughs> oh, man. How much fun would we, that be? Just it would do be it. a lot of fun. You get Allison and Leanne to fly up. It would be. There you go. It would be fun. Go. Yeah. Good night, Sharkies. Yep. I've that I always yeah I always go to Sharkies, but I, I there's uh there's another place that other oh, restaurant that's real. Dino's What's that? is really good. Dino's. That's that's where all the that's where all the big shots hang out. That's yeah. Oh yeah. Out. I remember they were there once and uh it was was it Antonio Brown that had the Rolls Royce. <laughs> uh and you don't see a lot of Rolls Royces outside. Not in the trobe. <laughs> Not in the trobe. Uh that's was Arnie back in the day. No, and here is like this gold plated, like gold out of gold finger, you know, James Bond 
Rolls Royce sitting in the parking lot of Dino's. And who is he in there with? Um, Arthur Motes. And I forget oh, yeah. who else. But it's like, <laughs> you go to Dino's when they're there, um, and there's the Steeler guys everywhere. Uh, and, and you better get there quick because it gets full quick. So, yeah, yeah um, that would be a lot of fun. And I just, like you said, I, I'm, I'm sure it's not over. There's probably somebody else coming. The draft's coming up. I can't remember being this more excited for Latrobe than, than than before. It's gonna be wild. It's gonna be wild. It's gonna be exciting. Yeah, because I mean Russell Wilson is, you know, he's he's a legend. He's he, you know Super Bowl winner. You know, when was the last time we had a Super Bowl champion as a as a quarterback besides Ben Roethlisberger? Yeah, D- yeah. David Woodley. Right. Right. Well, I remember like, Kevin Green talking about how I forget where the Rams used to do their thing, but they they would go um, to some local little posh uh, hotel resort nearby where they used to do their um, their camp back when all the NFL teams did camps at like universities or off site places. And he talked about humbling himself by going to stay at uh, St. Vincent in the dorms and Latrobe. Now the dorms are fairly nice there now. But, I mean, I think Russell Wilson, that's another thing he's probably thinking, like, hey, I'm going from having my own office at Mile High, and now I'm going to stay at a dorm room in Latrobe. Uh, we were there. Oh I, like, I hope I hope he knows about that. <laughs> he might change yeah, his no, mind. Someone told him. Yeah, you're going to St. Vincent College and staying in a dorm room. I'm going, what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll never forget, we were there one day, and we had, like, my little uh, – Liam, my son, he was probably – I have a picture of him and me, me and Joe. I'll send it to you or post it on Twitter. He's, like, two – we have my niece who at the time was probably seven or eight. And we got there real early because my brother-in-law is an alum at St. Vincent. So we, we had like this alumni thing. We, were, we got some special, you know, breakfast and whatever. Uh, it was for the, the Chuck Noll 5K when they used to do that. And they don't do that anymore, unfortunately. So we're there real early. And Antonio Brown comes busting out of the dorm. He's got a cell phone. He's wearing nothing but a shower, or a towel around his waist. He's on the phone. He's not swearing anything. He's on the phone talking. So he's got a, 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 a towel around his waist. I have Liam here, I have my niece here, and my brother. Oh, there go the Funkos. Um, my brother-in-law there, and we're just like, and, like, <laughs> and Antonio Brown's like turned around, like, yo, what's up, guys? Um, uh, I don't have anything to sign this with. And he goes right back in. But that's the kind of stuff you see at Latrobe. Uh, Please it, hold on to your towel. Please your towel. do not drop that towel. Yes, yes. Yeah. But that's the kind of stuff you see in old members of the media and uh, I won't say it. I don't get too much detail because I'll get emotional. But the last time I was there, uh, I went to the tree that I um, that me and Tunch we used to we used to go hang out by this tree and talk a couple of times. I have a picture that I have, I have it here, and uh, uh, but just seeing Tunch, you know, and just it, it, I hope Russell Wilson, some of these guys are coming in and realize how special that is because the Steelers and I think the Packers. Um, and, and maybe the Browns. I don't know. Uh, there's some of the very teams few teams do still do that kind of thing where they go out, they go away from yeah. the from, from the from the from the stadium and away from their 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 stuff, and um and have a uh... look which Funko fell. <laughs> Poor Kenny. Sorry. Uh, Is that what, what? Was that? that? Wait. Did Wait. You, did... He fell down with the Undertaker. That that is symbolic. Uh... Symbolic right there. There's no, there's no Undertaker return to, to Kenny's career. <laughs> I'd rather have Paul Bearer as the quarterback than Kenny Pickett. That's out. Oh yes, oh, my Kenny Pickett. Oh, <laughs> all right, man. Uh, yes, Joe. Good time. Yeah, yeah. That was that was fun. It was very cathartic. I'm glad I got. I, I, we had a lot to talk about, so I'm glad, glad we all cut it off our chest. So. Absolutely. Thank Good you. show. Great stealing. Uh, all right. Yep. I'll see you. See you, buddy.